unschooling is becoming more popular. It's a little bit more on the rise as people are beginning to understand really what it is. Like unschool isn't just like a cool thing and we're just going to dare to be different for the sake of being different and hope that things catch up. No, it really is a good educational philosophy that really suits some families who are looking for different ways that their children can be learning. And so, yes, unschool really, it's like, it's not anti-school. It's just that we can learn in life in different ways. And as we look at even different subjects and what we should be doing, there are some really great ways that we can do it. I have some videos on how to unschool math, science, you know, the others, check them out. I'll put the links down below. But, you know, what are we going to do about younger grades, you know, that aren't even like reading yet or doing that? Like, is there anything that we can do? I want to look at how we can unschool kindergarten. Hi, and welcome to Learning Life. And thank you so much for joining me today. Well, when it comes to unschooling, there can be so many questions about the right way to do it. In fact, there can be so many questions about the right way to homeschool as well. You know, so many questions. Guess what? There really is no one right way. Whether unschooling or doing more formal like homeschooling, whatever, no one right way. You have to make it work for you and your children. I unschooled my girls for kindergarten and first grade, and we really had a great time with it. I really wasn't what I was going to do. We sort of landed in it when I had to make a bit of a pivot. And what I really saw that the best thing out of it was that they didn't have any idea that they were doing school because they weren't, or that they were even learning. I remember video chats with my mother and she would ask the girls, well, what did you learn today? And their legitimate, straight up, punch me in the gut sort of little bit of response was, we didn't learn anything. And I had to stop and go, they don't view it as learning. It's life. They're just organically taking it in. And that's where unschooling kindergarten really is fantastic. Now, many states don't even require kindergarten. Did you know that? Many states don't require kindergarten. So do we need to stress about it? Pre-K kindergarten? No, we don't need to stress about it. Your child doesn't need to hit all the school benchmarks. They just need to have this life of learning. Look, I love to learn. And, you know, I, this is why we are learning life, that we can be looking at these things, parenting, education, trying to find maybe something's different that really works for us. So I want to thank you for watching, for your likes and subscribes, and for sharing it with your friends. So unschooling kindergarten. What do we do? I really think that there is one key aspect to it that drives it all. Have fun. Oh, I think it's important that we have fun with it. We certainly did. Now, something that wasn't planned that we fell sort of more naturally into it was sort of this theme as we went through the year. And now and then, like during the, we'd take a week and we'd take a letter of the alphabet and we would do a whole bunch of things just on that. But my girls didn't really see it as learning. These were games. This is what we were doing. I mean, we mixed things up as well. There was no, we're just going to create this plan. That's not what I wanted because children do learn so much organically that they don't need to be having formal lessons at this stage. And I started with formal lessons, but swung really to the pendulum of going, oh, we're going to continue what we did as they were toddlers and as in preschool and just build it up. So here's a sample of what we did for kindergarten. So we picked them different weeks. So this week was S week. And we had a fun game where we tried to see how many words we could get that actually started with S. We sort of then compared it to other letters. It was just fun. Like we're just writing it all down. Now, part of every week is like meal planning and shopping together. And, and we did this, but we decided to then have fun with coming up with foods and meals that started with S. So we wrote the meal plan and the shopping list and we went and got everything that we needed for the week. And so our meals were spaghetti, soup and salad, steak and squash, spetzla, 
which is a German noodle, and sausages, salmon and steak fries, and spanakopita, like the spinach triangles. I grew up calling them spinach triangles, spinach and cheese triangles. Uh, yeah, we had great time with that. We also ate strawberries, drank strawberry milk, because it's one of my favorites. So many S foods. For animals, we researched, ultimately asked Google, about squirrels and skinks and skunks and salamanders and snakes. So we looked at pictures, we went to the library and we talked about habitats. What did they sound like? Where do we find them? What did they look like? All of those fun things. For shapes, we went on walks around the neighborhood and around the shops to find squares and stars and spheres and semicircles. And all of this just sort of happened here and there. For art, we made we looked at like the Starry Night by Van Gogh and we made our own Starry Night picture. So we painted the background and we stuck on some star stickers. But we made snowmen out of marshmallows. We made sock puppets. We just had fun exploring that. In math, we used Skittles and we counted out six and seven. 16 and 17 and sort of added up to get to those numbers. And we made a game of calling out like those numbers when we were at shops to drive. A six, there's a seven. And it was fun. We also made patterns with these Skittles. Now, of course, there was lots of singing, playing, reading together, going on adventures, and more playing. This was the benchmark of our kindergarten. Strategies for unschooling kindergarten. You want to set up like your home as a learning environment that encourages exploration and discovery. So provide a wide range of materials, of books, of art and craft supplies, of things that they can play with, toys, blocks, all of that, that will reflect your child's interest and actually invite those hands-on learning experiences. You'll want to observe and listen to your child to identify, oh, what are their interests? Oh, what are their passions? And encourage them to pursue those. Okay, so if they've said that they're really interested in dogs, you know, then we're going to pursue that and you'll provide resources and materials, whether, you know, and it can be dinosaurs, dogs, nature, whatever it is. So we want to like line up with that and give them great tools and great ways of being able to learn this. Also give your child the freedom to choose how they want to learn. So if they're really interested in something and they're so super engaged and immersed in that activity, you know, provide that support and guidance when needed, but allow them to do it. Like, don't try to like cut off a limb and think, well, they've done 30 minutes and it's time to move on. No, allow them to be immersed. And in that, like, ask them like open-ended questions about it, like encourage them to think critically about it. Let's say they're building with blocks and they're building up this and be like, well, what do you think would happen if... We started like this tower with the smallest blocks. Like how high do you think we could get it? You know, really get them to like look at that and like, oh, their curiosity, what could they do with different things? Engage them like in meaningful experiences, like with real world connections. So this means you get to take lots of trips. You know, go to museums and parks and libraries. If there's a community event, you go there and like get them to really like look at what's around, like ask questions if there is somebody there like you're at the botanical gardens and somebody's talking about frogs, you get them to ask questions about it. You know, we want them to make connections to what they are learning without necessarily realizing that they are learning. Also surround your child with books and read aloud to them regularly. This is really how they're going to be learning to read the best. And then provide like activities based on the books. This is something that I actually love to do with the girls. We would pick a book and then I would come up with some activities. Maybe it's craft or cooking because cooking is such a great thing for kids. You know, maybe it was like a writing activity or a drawing or just something like to engage. I want to show some examples that came out of this. I call them pocket packs. These ones are mini ones that I just based like on a book. Um, these are actually things that we did with the girls. So we read Winnie the Pooh and we made like honeycomb slime and we actually made the honeycomb candy. That was a lot of fun. Like when you watch it go up like this and we played poo sticks. We, um, we would talk about like our favorite toy and we did things like and a couple other activities. Like It's great. Or like Possum Magic, one of my favorite books by Mem Fox. And this one, like we read the book. This is a great way to really look at like culture. So I actually have questions in here as well. The Vegemite taste test. Look, we love Vegemite, but we added that for people that just don't know. We made a pavlova. Like 
if you had to become visible again, what like foods would you need to eat? I think it's all in here. I love these little pocket packs and I actually, I have so many ideas like for more, but you can check them out. They are in the store on my website, learningthis.life. And this is just a great way even like, to get some ideas for yourself. Start with this, but you know, when we can pick books and do activities with it, we're just sort of engaging in it. And, you know, sometimes we did a chapter book. So we, like we read Charlotte's Web. I remember the, the tears at the end. Um, I understand my tears were with them. And then we did a theme night. We watched the original movie, the cartoon, which is older than I am. And we ate foods that went with it. We made pigs in a blanket. We had curly fries. We made uh, gravy for the mud. We made apple pie, like bombs. Uh, so little like apple bombs. And we had like a spider web cake. Like it was just so much fun. And that's something that we've actually continued with. So just really engaging around books. We also want to encourage unstructured playtime. That's a key word, unstructured. This is where your child can like freely explore, like imagine and, and just interact. You know, I love play-based learning and it really does allow for creativity, problem solving, like social interactions. Like, and I really can't stress this enough. You need to make sure that there is plenty of time for unstructured imaginative play. There is structured play where maybe you're playing board games or you're working on like different things, but this unstructured or imaginative play really is the biggest thing that you can be giving your children. This is when they're trying new things. This is where they're exploring. This is when you're actually listening in. You're like, oh, wow, how much they've learned, like just based on their interest. Now, remember that unschooling kindergarten really is allowing for flexibility and personalizing like for your child. You need to trust in their natural curiosity. And you also need to trust in like that innate desire to learn. I think it really is within all of us. And together you get to like embrace that joy like of learning. We do not need to get bogged down with the, this is what they have to learn. Because guess what? There really is nothing that they have to. The only thing that you have to do is have fun and have lots of play. Okay, we do not need to get bogged down with this. Unschooling kindergarten is so freeing and it actually is a lot easier than people think. And what a great way to really build our children up with it in a way that looks free and unencumbered, but really just builds on their creativity, their imagination, their critical thinking, and this organic learning. Well, thank you so much for watching today. And I hope that this helped you. And maybe, maybe this just might inspire you to be unschooling for kindergarten. It really is a lot of fun. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment down below. I also want to remind you that tomorrow night, if you're watching Thursday, Friday night, we're going to end the giveaway. What giveaway? Watch previous, like the video from last week, and I will tell you what the giveaway is and what you have to do to get into it. And we will announce that next week. Well, thank you for watching, for being part of Learning Life. If you want to be part of this community, share it with your friends. And also you can help us get these videos out by becoming a patron. So check that out at patreon.com or at my website as a champion. And don't forget to check out like the pocket packs, learningthis.life. <laughs>